there are two primary methodologies for seismic hazard assessment deterministic and probabilistic and i think by now you already have an idea about what deterministic mean that uh, in this methodology you just consider a single earthquake scenario that this is my fault which is governing the seismicity at my site and the maximum magnitude which this fault can produce as uh, seen in the historical seismicity pattern is this one magnitude 7 for example and that fault is located at a distance of uh, let us say 30 kilometer from my site. So, the PGA value or SS value or S 1 value which can be expected at my site uh, can be estimated in a deterministic manner using a ground motion prediction equation right. A ground motion prediction equation is an equation which have a hazard parameter on y axis if you plot it graphically. It can be PGA, it can be now SS, it can be S 1, it can be spectral acceleration at 1.5 second, it can be spectral acceleration at 3 second any time period. So, any hazard parameter is on y axis and the source to side distance is on x axis and generally it is a different line for different magnitudes. So, m 6, m 7, m 8 right Obvi oh, I, I think pl plotted them opposite. So, it should be m 6 down m 7, m 8 right. So, using these kind of an equation from available literature you directly say that ok uh, my distance is 30 kilometer this one, my maximum magnitude which can occur is magnitude 7 this one. So, this is my PGA value or this is my S S value or S 1 value right this process is called DSHA. This only involves the use of GMPE ground motion prediction equation and uh, previously we used to call it attenuation model. Now, we call it GMPE. So, you only consider a single scenario worst scenario and it gives you one fixed hazard value whether it is PGA or SS or S 1 one fixed number. No information about the probability of exceedance no information about whether that number will be exceeded in future or what is the chance that it will exceed exceed because you cannot for sure say that if this number is let us say 0 0.5 g. Now, can you say that no earthquake can occur which can produce more than 0 0.5 g you cannot say this for sure. So, there should always be a probability of exceedance, but uh, DSHA does not uh, provide us that information. PSHA actually consider all magnitudes not one magnitude 7 or fixed magnitude. It consider all significant distances if there are 5 faults which are in vicinity of your site it will consider the contribution of all 5 faults in predicting the hazard parameter at your site right and uh, it will give the output in probabilistic manner. It will give you a PGA of 0.5 g but it will also tell you that this 0.5 g corresponds to let us say 10 percent probability of exceedance in 50 years. Now, it is your choice that uh, you accept this definition or not because you can also get from the same PSHA a complete probability of exceedance versus PGA or spectral acceleration line which is called hazard curve right. So, the output of uh, PSHA is not one number for one particular site. It is one whole curve for a particular site and that curve is relating the probability of exceedance with the PGA value or a hazard value any value right. So, now if you want uh, 10 percent you pick the 10 percent number. If you want 2 percent MCE level pick the MCE level number which will be higher than 10 percent or if you want any intermediate number you can pick from that curve. So, now the probability of exceedance is in your hand right. So, you are it gives you more flexibility. So, you design on 0.5 g and accept 10 percent risk. You design on 0.9 g and accept 2 percent risk right. So, deterministic earthquake scenario actually become a subset of PSHA right. So, but, uh, but DSHA is is very easy to do. Let me show you one example 
of d s h a. Uh, and before that, if I just summarize its main steps. First is that you identify all potential earthquake sources surrounding your site. This fault is closest, so therefore, this will govern the seismicity. For example, evaluation of the source to site distance 30 kilometer from my site, let us say. Then and obviously, there is some inform there, there is some thing in that that the shortest epicentral distance or hypocentral distance if the source is a line source. Line source means fault. There can be a point source also like a volcano is a point source. A source of an earthquake which is producing earthquake again and again at a point for example originating from a point. But the point source concept we also use in PSHA for past earthquakes also. But line source is a fault line for example. Then identification of the maximum earthquake expressed in terms of magnitude or any other parameter. So, magnitude 7 let us say 30 kilometer fault A let us say fault A. This is my information about DSHA up till now. Now, D is the most important thing select a predictive relationship is also called as the attenuation model or GMPE ground motion prediction equation and uh, this you will select from the available literature. There are many GMPs available. Some are proposed by individual researchers, some are developed by international organizations with consensus and then they are available for researchers to use freely. So, there are I mean more than I can count like more than 20, 30 GMPs uh, which are available in literature and they are developed from different past earthquake data. Right? So, you will select it with care obviously that which will actually represent the seismicity of your site. But you will select a relationship. An example of such a relationship, a very simple example is this equation 1.22. It is simply relating PGA value, log of PGA value with the magnitude and source to site distance m and r. If you just put m and r in this equation, you get PGA. If you graphically plot this equation, it will be like this r and PGA and then for different magnitudes you, you will have a different line. right? So, this is originally developed by Cornell, one of the main you can say founders of PSHA methodology itself. This is a very simple one and mostly used for demonstration purpose, but currently if you look at to today's GMPs, they are very detailed. They are very long equations with different empirical coefficients and they are not only for PGA, they are for any spectral acceleration also. The coefficients will change and it will become for SS. Coefficients will change and it will become for S1, same equation. right? So, currently I will show you in maybe next class detailed form of the GMPs, but this is very simple relating PGA with source to site distance for different magnitudes that based on the past earthquake data which is and obviously how you actually construct a GMP. You actually record the ground shakings from different magnitude earthquakes in past and you record it at different distances from epicenter and, and then you see how the PGA is reducing with distance. And finally, you if you have thousands of data points like this, then you can get a best fit line and uh, then propose that equation as a GMP. right? But uh, the point is that this is a GMP for PGA, but you can find nowadays GMPs for SS, for S1, for any spectral acceleration. So, you can not only predict PGA at your site, you can also predict SS and S1 at your site and ultimately you can make a map of SS and S1 just like you can make a map for PGA. right? So, nowadays when you perform PSHA, you make a map for PGA, you make a map for SS, at the same time you make a map for S1 or any other spectral acceleration you may want. right? So, DSHA is simply putting magnitude 7 and 30 kilometer in this equation and getting PGA and PGA value as an output. right? This is DSHA.
we are talking about the most governing seismic source at your site. So, if you have more than one source, right, then you perform this process for each source. <coughs> what is the source to site distance? What is the maximum magnitude which it can, and just accept the maximum PGA which which any source can produce, right? This is a single scenario case, and the most supposed to be most conservative. But I'll show you one uh, specific example where uh, DSHA uh, is is no more conservative. Maybe PSHA can give in some cases higher number than DSHA, right? So just uh, see the application of this idea in one quick example. Let's say this is your site at origin. You call it let's say zero zero coordinates. This is your coordinate system. So, source one is a fault line, which starts from this coordinates x, y, and this coordinate, and then source two and three are point sources, right? Currently, you can think of them as any, uh, you can say, source which is producing earthquakes frequently, but you cannot trace exactly it as a fault. So, you just assume that it is a point which is producing earthquake, right? one example of a point source is volcano also right so let's say that the maximum magnitude uh, which the source one can produce is 7.5 so 7.5 source two can produce 6.8 maximum and source three can produce 5.0 right so maybe source three is uh, very close but the maximum magnitude which it can produce is very low right compared to the other one so um, just use this information calculate the closest distance straight line distance from source 1 2 and 3 right <laughs> this will be the distance just draw a perpendicular to line and this will be the closest distance right so then and obviously this information about the maximum magnitude m max we have to estimate that first we cannot just assume it from the historical data we will get an estimate about what maximum earthquake which this source have already produced right and this will give you an idea about the maximum possible earthquake in future also right so you simply put these numbers in that same equation let's say we are using that cornell's equation for the purpose of dsha so simply put these m values for source 1 2 3 and r values calculated from your site and get the pga value now source one which was a fault source although may not be the closest source r okay sorry in this case it is the closest source 23 but it is not necessary that the closest source always give the maximum pga depends on the the mag magnitude also so 0.49 g is the pga which is the maximum pga at your site so if you are, have to perform dsha Uh, this is how you have to do it and uh, uh, this is the pga which is resulted from this dsha process right so uh, you can do it for each site in one particular study area and finally make a map of pga right but it will be a dsha a, a map constructed from dsha it will not be having a probabilistic definition so you have no idea that if you design a building on 0.49g what is the acceptable risk and uh, what is the possibility that the future pga is more than that right so this is supposed to be a conservative estimate of the future pga right 